So, now we have a combustor operating at steady state. So, air at a temperature T a and fuel at a temperature T f enter the combustor with the steady mass flow rates and steady mass flow rates and properties and uh, chemical reaction takes place inside the combustor and products. So, some heat is uh, removed from the combustor. So, that products at a temperature T p leave the combustor. Okay. So, depending on the amount of heat you remove the uh, product temperature will be different. Okay. So, we uh, assume that, uh, so the, because the combustor operates at steady state, we assume that sufficient heat is removed to maintain the product temperature at T p. Now, we uh, apply steady flow energy equation to the combustor, we get uh, 0 equal to q dot minus w x dot plus m dot f times h f plus m dot a h a minus m dot p h p, no change so far. Okay. W x dot is 0. Uh, no uh, external work uh, is being supplied or uh, generated in the combustor. So, that is set to 0. Now, chemical reactions are taking place in this um, uh, in this combustor and based on what we have discussed so far, if you uh, recall all the, uh, the combustion reactions that we wrote down so of written on a molar basis. Okay. So, uh, chemical reactions basically what we say in chemical reaction is the following that one mole of uh, hydrogen combines with half mole of oxygen to form one mole of water vapor in a chemical reaction. So, it is always convenient to uh, or it is always customary to write uh, chemical reactions uh, in terms of number of moles. So, the coefficients that appear in the chemical reactions are actually the number of moles of each one of the species. Okay. So, it would be convenient to write this expression also on a uh, molar basis. So, for that purpose what we do is the following. So, we take this term and multiply and divide by its uh, molecular weight. For instance, uh, uh, we write the first term as m f dot times molecular weight of fuel divided by molecular weight of fuel times h of fuel. Remember h here as written is without an over bar. So, that means it is in units of kilojoule per kilogram. So, if I combine remember m dot as units of kg per second. So, this quantity here as units of kg per k mole and so does this one. So, this also has units of kg per k mole. So, if I combine these two terms, the resulting quantity would have units of k mole per second or that can that may be identified as the molar flow rate of the fuel. So, m dot f is the mass flow rate of the fuel and m dot f divided by the molecular rate of fuel may be identified as the molar flow rate of fuel. Okay. And the remaining two terms may be combined and that may be identified. So, this has units of kilo joule per kilo mole. Okay. So, this has units of uh, kilo joule per kilo mole and that may be identified as h f bar. So, each one of these terms may then be written as instead of m dot f h f, we may write it as n dot f times h bar of f. Okay. So, we may write it as n dot f times h bar of f like this. Now, we divide through by n dot of f because you may recall that whenever we write uh, uh, combustion equations, we always write on a per uh, kilo mole of fuel basis. We would always like to do that. So, you always write on a per kilo mole of fuel basis, which is why I am dividing through by n dot of f. So, if we divide through by n dot of f, you are left with this expression and the uh, h bar in uh, each one of this term, this one, this one and this one may itself be written based on uh, the expression that we uh, wrote down just a uh, couple of uh, uh, slides ago. So, that uh, h bar of f is nothing but enthalpy of formation of fuel plus delta h f evaluated at T f and so on. Okay. And for the uh, reactant stream, the term has to be evaluated for each one of the reactant species. So, I here denotes the uh, reactant species. Okay. So, we have to denote it for each one of the reactant species and again for the products, we need to write this for each one of the product species. 
notice that the reactant stream consists of in this case uh, air which means it consists of O2 plus N2 which means we have to uh, write um, write the uh, the we have to break this down into its individual species and then treat each individual species like this and similarly for the product stream so we can actually combine uh, uh, this term here or these two terms and identify this as the specific enthalpy of reactants H bar on a molar basis and write this as, as H bar of products. Okay. So, this is steady flow energy equation applied to the combustor. So, now we are in a position to calculate for instance uh, Q dot which is what is usually desired. Okay. If you recall uh, when we had a Brayton cycle or any of the other applications where we supplied heat basically fuel was burnt to generate that heat and we said you know so many kilojoules are supplied from a reservoir at such and such a temperature. Okay. So, now we are in a position to actually calculate uh, Q dot and also uh, the get an idea about the reservoir temperature. Notice that reservoir temperature that we were talking about earlier would more or less be represented by uh, Tp. So, the temperature at which the products leave. Okay. So, that is the temperature at which the reservoir is maintained. So, that we can we remove the uh, certain amount of heat to maintain the products at that temperature. So, now we are in a position to calculate given uh, say uh, temperature of the products we can actually apply steady flow energy equation and calculate Q dot or vice versa. Now, uh, I mentioned earlier that combustion is an exothermic reaction. So, which means that um, uh, H bar of reactants is actually greater than H bar of products. So, that heat has to be removed to maintain the products at a certain temperature. Okay. So, enthalpy of the reactants is greater than the enthalpy of the products. So, heat is released in the combustion reaction. So, this shows the variation of uh, enthalpy of reactants and the variation of the enthalpy of products on a molar basis. Remember, in uh, the module on combustion, everything is done on a molar basis okay? uh, because chemical reactions are taking place and chemical reactions are always written on a molar basis. Okay. So, uh, property calculations, uh, specific enthalpy, specific entropy, everything is on a molar basis. Okay. So, this is the departure from how we have done this so far. So far, we have always uh, used specific enthalpy in units of kilojoule per kilogram or specific entropy in units of kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Okay. The only exception is in this module on combustion. And the reason for that comes from chemical reactions. Okay. Now, this difference for example, the difference in enthalpy between the reactants and products at uh, any temperature for example, I, I may evaluate it at uh, this temperature. Okay. So, this then would be delta H bar of uh, the reaction at this temperature which is this value. So, delta H R is actually a function of temperature. So, enthalpy of reaction or heat of reaction typically is measured at T ref which is 298 kelvins. Okay. So, it is in general defined as H bar of products minus H bar of reactants and the important thing is uh, the products, reactants and fuel all must be at the same temperature. Okay. So, that the heat that we are getting is only due to chemical reaction. Okay, not due to uh, temperature changes in the product stream or reactant stream. Okay. Everything must be at the temperature at which we want the enthalpy of reaction. So, for example, uh, in this reactor, if air comes in at let us say uh, 700 Kelvin, fuel comes in at 298 Kelvin, products leave at some other temperature. See, there is a change in enthalpy of the air and fuel due to changes in temperature that is, uh, you know, that is taking place in the combustor. So, then this would strictly speaking not be the enthalpy of the reaction because some of the energy goes into heating uh, the air or the uh, fuel has to be heated more than the air stream in this case and so on. Okay. So, if we want enthalpy of uh, reaction at a particular temperature, let us say 1000 Kelvin, 
air must come in at 1000 Kelvin, fuel must come in at 1000 Kelvin, products must, must leave at 1000 Kelvin. If you want uh, heat of reaction at 298 Kelvin, then air, fuel and products must all enter and leave at 298 Kelvin. Okay, that is very important. So, delta HR as we have already mentioned is negative because H bar products is greater than H bar reactant for combustion reactions which are exothermic. Okay, and as I mentioned, delta HR is usually evaluated at the reference temperature. Now, enthalpy of combustion naturally leads us to the notion of a calorific value of the fuel. Okay. Uh, so in, in combustion, since reactants are fuel plus air, the calorific value of the fuel is numerically equal to delta H R without the negative sign. We always say calorific value of a fuel is such and such a number and that is always a positive number. So, calorific value is always equal to uh, uh, absolute value of delta H bar, H R bar. However, um, a distinction needs to be ma made uh, on the calorific value depending on whether the water in the product stream is in vapor form or liquid form. If the water leaves in vapor form, then uh, uh, we get what is called a, uh, a lower calorific value. Now, if we remove more heat so that the water also condenses and leaves in liquid form, then we get the higher calorific value. So, if you look at this reactor. So, if the if uh, water leaves as vapor and we remove certain amount of uh, heat that is called the uh, lower calorific value. If I remove more heat then the water vapor in the product stream will also condense before it leaves which means the resulting calorific value will be higher ok. That is why we have two calorific values lower calorific value and higher calorific value. The, the difference between the two is the latent heat of vaporization at that temperature. So, let us uh, work out a, a few examples to illustrate the ideas that we have uh, 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 discussed so far. Determine the higher and lower calorific value of methane at uh, 298 Kelvin. Enthalpy of formation of methane is given to be minus 74850 kilojoule per kilomole. Unless otherwise stated, we assume uh, stoichiometric amount of air. So, combustion of methane with stoichiometric amount of air is represented by this chemical reaction. Okay. Now, if I say vapor, then I get the lower calorific value. If I account for latent heat, then I get the uh, higher calorific value. Okay. So, SFE applied for this case with the Tp uh, equal to Ta equal to Tf equal to 298 Kelvin reads like this. So, 0 equal to Q dot over N of dot plus enthalpy of formation of fuel, enthalpy of formation of the, uh, the, the um, uh, air that is coming into the combustor broken down into its constituent elements O2 and N2. And this is the uh, enthalpy of the uh, product stream which consists of as you can see from here CO2, H2O and N2. All are leaving at 298, uh, um, uh, the products are uh, leaving at 298 Kelvin, reactants are coming in at 298 Kelvin. Which means that uh, the uh, sensible enthalpy uh, of CH4 is 0 because uh, it is at 298 Kelvin. Now, enthalpy of formation of O2 is 0 because it is uh, it occurs naturally. Uh, so, there is no uh, enthalpy of formation for O2. Uh, the sensible enthalpy for O2 is 0 because it is coming at 298 Kelvin. And the same uh, is true for nitrogen also. Enthalpy of formation of nitrogen is 0 because it occurs naturally. And uh, in this case, delta H bar is 0 because it comes in at 298 Kelvin. Enthalpy of formation of CO2 uh, is non zero, but uh, sensible enthalpy is 0 because it leaves at uh, 298 Kelvin and uh, again uh, 0 for H2O also and for the uh, nitrogen in the product stream both the enthalpy of formation and delta H bar are 0. Now, the enthalpy of formation of uh, CO2 and uh, H2O are given in uh, the combustion table. Let us uh, let us take a look at the combustion table. 
So, as you can see uh, this table lists uh, sensible enthalpies and enthalpy of formation of uh, just a uh, limited number of gases. Um, of course, uh, if you consult uh, this website, this I consider to be the most authoritative webbook.nist.gov contains um, all the um, uh, I mean values for practically any species that you can think of. Okay, It is an excellent source and I uh, urge you to consult this source if required in, uh, for any uh, use in the future. Okay, So, enthalpy of formation of uh, as you can see uh, O2 0 N2 0 CO2 minus 393.52 uh, mega joule per kilo mole and so on. Okay. So, this also gives delta h bar as a function of temperature. So, if you retrieve the value from the table, so you may retrieve the uh, value uh, for enthalpy of formation of CO2 and so on from the table and enthalpy of formation of methane is already given in the problem statement. So, if you substitute the numbers, you get the uh, lower calorific value to be 802330 kilojoule per kilo mole. Remember, we have taken water to be in the vapor phase. So, the combustion table that we just looked at lists delta H bar for water vapor. So, on a mass basis, we get the uh, calorific value of uh, methane to be approximately 50 uh, mega joule per kilogram of CH4. So, the calorific value of hydrocarbon fuels generally tend to be in this range between 40 to 50 mega joule per kilogram. Now, the higher calorific, in, uh, we want to calculate the higher calorific value also and there is no change uh, in any of these uh, terms except uh, the one for the water vapor. So, here uh, this value here is um, uh, is Hg minus Hf from the steam table at 298 Kelvin and converted to uh, kilo joule per kilo mole basis. Okay. What is that? This goes with the negative sign because we are removing heat. So, the higher calorific value comes out to be 890 uh, 226 kilo joule per kilo mole of fuel or 55 mega joule per uh, kilogram of CH4. That is the only difference. So, basically the enthalpy of uh, formation of liquid water this is nothing but enthalpy of formation of water vapor and then we need to remove the latent heat to get it to the liquid state. Just like what we did for the uh, carbon when we took it from solid phase to gaseous phase, we needed to supply heat. Here we take the water vapor from the gaseous phase to the liquid phase, so we need to remove heat. So, that is what we have done here. Next example uh, involves liquid N dodecane. Uh, so, N dodecane basically is uh, kerosene. Uh, so, liquid N dodecane at 298 Kelvin and air at 700 Kelvin steadily enter the combustor of a gas turbine engine. Determine the required mass flow rate of air and the corresponding equivalence ratio. If the temperature of the products is A 1700 Kelvin, B 2200 Kelvin. Heat loss from the combustor may be neglected. Enthalpy of formation of liquid dodecane uh, may be taken as minus 352100 kilo joule per kilo mole. So, chemical reaction for uh, the combustion of um, liquid N dodecane with air may be written like this. Okay. Now, uh, we are asked to uh, calculate the required mass flow rate of air. So, this is for uh, stoichiometric combustion. Now, you notice that the um, temperature of the product uh, varies okay. and there is no uh, heat loss or heat removal from the combustor. Okay. So, basically if you look at the combustor, 
So, this is air at 700 Kelvin, this is uh, fuel at 298 Kelvin. Now, the products are leaving either at 1700 Kelvin or 2200 Kelvin. So, the temperature of the products is being uh, adjusted by adjusting the um, uh, by adjusting the amount of air. Okay. So, by supplying uh, excess air or uh, by reducing the amount of air whatever the case may be and uh, the product temperature is being adjusted. So, we rewrite this uh, equation like this. So, the um, uh, the 18.5 the coefficient 18.5 uh, in the second term is now multiplied with the 1 point uh, 1 plus x. So, if the excess air supplied is 0 then we revert to the stoichiometric uh, combustion case if it is more if excess air is supplied then we get it to be a positive number otherwise we get it to be a negative number the quantity x otherwise becomes a negative number. So, the balanced chemical reaction for this case looks like this. So, we apply SFE to the combustor, the fuel comes in at uh, 298 Kelvin. So, uh, sensible enthalpy uh, is 0 for the fuel and this corresponds to the, uh, uh, the enthalpy term for the reactants uh, for the air I am sorry for the air. Notice that the uh, sensible enthalpy for O2 and N2 are not 0 because they both come in at 700 Kelvin. And uh, this is the uh, enthalpy term for uh, the products which uh, comprises of CO2, H2O, O2 and N2. CO2, H2O, O2 and N2 as you can see here and the products leave at a temperature Tp. So, if you substitute the known values which are basically the enthalpy of formation uh, values and rearrange we get an expression for uh, uh, x like this. Okay. So, here all the delta h values are, are to be evaluated at the product temperature. So, if the product temperature is 1700 Kelvin then we get x to be 1.2695. Okay, and the um, required mass flow rate. Okay, remember this is in uh, on a molar basis. So one point one plus x times eighteen point five times four point seven six kilo moles of air are supplied per kilo mole of fuel. Okay, so we multiply that by the molecular weight of air to convert it to a, a mass basis. Okay. And uh, remember here we are supplying uh, uh, the molecular weight of fuel is 170. So, we get this to be on a mass basis like this 33.905 kg per kg of fuel. So, this is basically kg of air per kg of fuel. And remember equivalence ratio is the fuel air actual fuel air ratio divided by stoichiometric fuel air ratio. So, actual fuel air ratio is 1 plus x stoichiometric is 1. So, this comes out to be 0 0.44 which is on the very much on the lean side all uh, being uh, probably being quite close to the lean limit of the fuel. So, I am going to uh, leave it as an exercise for you to uh, uh, rework this problem for a product temperature of 2400 Kelvin. Okay. The, uh, uh, the calculation for uh, product temperature of 2400 Kelvin are worked out in the book. So, you may compare your answer with what is given in the book.